This is Ebervale, a town of around 30,000 people in the heart of the beautiful Welsh valleys. Once home to the largest steelworks in Europe, Ebervale today is in one of the most socially and economically deprived regions in the United Kingdom. A quarter of working age adults are on benefits. Male unemployment is more than double the national average and more than a third of the population have no educational qualifications at all. To any casual visitor, Ebervale doesn't superficially look or feel like one of the most hard-hit areas of Britain. The old steelworks has recently been redeveloped at a cost of £350 million, creating new schools and colleges, a new hospital and state-of-the-art sports facilities, not to mention all the construction work involved in building new road and rail links into town. I've also never been to a place with so many blue EU flags adorning all these new buildings. They're literally everywhere. That's because the EU has funded a sizeable part of all the regeneration here. A whopping £1.8 billion has been invested by the EU in Wales since 2014. Yet, in the Brexit referendum, 62% of people here voted to leave, the highest proportion in Wales. So much of the investment here has come from the European Union. The college over there, the station over there, all of these buildings uh, were, were, were invested in from funds from the European Union. Funds which won't necessarily be replaced by governments in London and Cardiff. So my first question is why did people vote in large numbers against the European Union, the source of so much investment in this community? Five and six, 56. Monday night is bingo night at the ex-servicemen's club. 39, 6 and 2, 62. Anybody know the secret rest of this number? 6 and 2. No, that's the percentage that voted for out of Brexit. We pay for me to say that. I've got a fiver. My name is uh, George Mond. I'm from uh, Evervale, born and bred. I voted to get out of Brexit. Uh, I'd like to put the great back in Great Britain. Because we're not governing ourselves, we're governed by people that we don't know. Three or blind, 30. My name is Maria Williams from Ebervale, South Wales. I voted out of Brexit for two main reasons. To stop the illegal immigrants coming in and to get our justice system back. On its own, number one. My name is Maureen Windmill from Ebervale, South Wales. I voted out for Brexit. One of the main reasons being um, any monies that we've received from Europe to be spent on our town uh, was spent uh, on the wrong things. Three and eight, Fairly unanimous views from the bingo crowd then. 82. The next morning, I met up with the leader of the Ebervale Business Forum, Phil Edwards. He agreed to show me some examples of what people here feel has been misspent EU money. We started on the new two and a half million pound lift that takes you up the side of the old steelworks slag heap. Fantastic amount of money, over half a billion. Half a billion? Yeah, in Brian Grant alone. The Dragon is European funded, is it? Yeah, the Dragon is European funded. <laughs> okay. What do you think of all the money being spent on the, you know, the town centre here, the high street, this Dragon and so on? You, 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 can't, you can't complain about it in, in one sense. It is pretty. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. It's cosmetic. Um, you know, if you have somebody dying, you don't give them cosmetic surgery to keep them alive. That, that's not going to help. The town is dying. The, the borough is dying. And it needs employment. It just needs pretty bollards and wonderful looking dragons and a clock that it doesn't keep the right time. You know? <laughs> this specific criticism about how EU money is being spent is accompanied by a wider yearning for a return to the certainties of the town's industrial past, when the steelworks provided full employment and good wages. 
600,000 tonnes of rolled steel used to be produced here annually. The giant furnaces used to light up the night sky, bringing prosperity and pride to the town. But 15 years ago, the steelworks closed down and the site was demolished, ending over 200 years of iron and steel production. Nothing big enough has been able to replace all the lost jobs and the industrial skills of the past. I was the last training master in Eberville yeah. before it closed, apprentice myself. And so when we talk apprenticeships, when we had a steelworks with City and Gill's London registered apprenticeships, four years, five year apprenticeships, we had proper training. This place we sat in today, the scientific institution, taught physics, mm. chemistry, mm. woodwork, metalwork, electrical, you name it, it right. was taught you. Applied. Yeah. We've lost that. Now, if we could have European money to reinvent that, mm. because we're told we haven't got the skills, we need people to come in from mm. Eastern Europe or wherever, then I think people would have said, oh, hang on. Mm. So ESF money was used to provide. We didn't see that. We haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Those same people, those who've lived here all their lives, maybe worked in the steelworks when it was still open here, they feel the EU funding that's been invested into the local community to help hasn't really made the difference that they want. It hasn't created jobs. It's, it's created shiny buildings like this. It's been used to fund street art. It's used to make cosmetic changes, but not to really help people find work. However, when you get chatting to people, many say their number one reason for voting to leave the EU was not jobs or a lack of heavy industry, but immigration. It's lunchtime in Morgan's pub in the town centre. It's part of an arcade refurbished with, you guessed it, EU money. Hello, I'm Nick. Hello. Only around 2% of the population in Ebba Vale are actually foreign born. Even so, views on immigration run strong. I disagree with the immigration. I do, you know, and that was the biggest worry when I voted out. I know you can't stop immigration, a certain amount, but like hospitals need the nurses and doctors and things like that. But then all the elders that have come here and the Romanians and that, I know I shouldn't be prejudiced, but uh, you know, I just want our country. I'd like it to be back. I know it never will be back to what it was. Personally, for me, it's not a big deal, but I can, see, I can understand well, where, where, it was. Where, where they're coming from. And jobs are being undermined, they're being taken, wages are being undermined. I, I understand that, I totally understand that. I think they got a, a vet people coming in, so the right oh, yeah. people come in. If you went yeah. to America, if you went to Canada, if you went to Australia, you'd have to be, you'd have to have the credentials to get in there. And I, I think, think that's, that's what they need you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Immigration was obviously a hugely important factor for so many of those who voted for Brexit. But given how low immigration is locally, it isn't clear what will need to change in Ebervale itself to reassure people. And is immigration such a big concern for younger generations? A group of students at the new, again, part EU funded, sixth form college allowed me to interrupt their A-level politics class. If you had voted, would immigration have been a really big deal for you? No? It's not that immigration affects our area, it's the fear of immigration. So it's a feeling? It's a feeling, it's, a, it's an emotion, it's a thing that many people, they see in London, they see in Birmingham, in But in not Bradford. here in Evervale? There's, there's no um, immigration here, it's the fear of it. Right. You've got like a few people from like, for example, like Poland, Turkey, Romania, but I feel like if they've got like bad qualifications and some of the people who live here have, then they should have the jobs because it's all about the best qualified. Like I feel like we should all be treated equally. A lot of this immigration that's coming in now has been witnessed by an older generation, whereas like my generation, I have gone through all school with people from different backgrounds and because I've grown up with them and I don't have that same fear of immigration because I know that they're just the same, but I think that because other people like the older generation then w didn't experience that as much. They have that bigger fear of it because it's alien to them. Walking around this splendid 35 million pound building 
it's clear that despite the negative perceptions amongst some older voters about how EU money is spent, it has helped younger students to gain both academic and vocational skills. The young and the old here in Ebervale appear to perceive the same reality very differently. And this generational difference could increase further if Brexit doesn't bring the benefits people were told to expect during the referendum campaign. New jobs, new industry, more money for the NHS, less immigration. If people feel let down, the political consequences could be serious. They will go to the extremes, most definitely, as, uh, especially the Brexiteers, because they are most likely the poorer and the least well-off, and I'd say in some cases abandoned by uh, mainstream politics. I think centre-ground politics is not as engaging, and if you're in a well-off area, you're going to feel frustrated, and I think it's easier to relate to people who are on like the far right or the far left. You can see it in the Netherlands, France and Greece right now, all the extreme parties are incredibly popular over there. And it's worrying because the normal party, like Conservatives, Lib Dems and Labour, needs to uh, catch on to this and, and capitalise and say, well, we support Brexit, but let's not go extreme to the extremes right and left. So having spent some time here in Ebervale, I'm much clearer in my own mind about why people voted for Brexit in large numbers, particularly older voters, because, you know, how much money was spent by the European Union on this shiny building or that project, all of that paled in significance to the feeling, the longing for a return to past certainties, when the steelworks were open, where everyone had jobs, where people had money in their pockets, and when people had an opportunity to rattle the cage and say, we want that back, it wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't so much that they were left behind, it was their feeling about what they had left behind. But the past is not going to return. And it's difficult not to feel a sense of foreboding that should Brexit fail to meet people's hopes, dissatisfaction could turn into real rage. And as we're seeing elsewhere in the world, that can quickly be seized upon by political movements offering ever more divisive and angry visions of the future. <laughs>